Bit of one ahead of the Premier League, yeah, might have something to say about that. Thank you very much. That was uh, Alex Capstick, sports correspondent. Human rights groups have long said that Indian security forces have tortured suspected insurgents in Kashmir, and the latest WikiLeaks shows the International Committee of the Red Cross basically shares that view, or at least it did so in 2005. Kazi Munir is a businessman in Srinagar who says he was tortured as recently as last year. I asked him what happened. On May 2009, it was Friday evening. I was traveling from the It was in May 2009, and it was early in the morning, and I was traveling home. And during my trip, some security guards and some policemen stopped me and asked me some questions. They asked me, why are you traveling here at this time? It turned out that there had been an incident in the area. They wanted to know why I was there. I told them that I worked nearby. I'd been supplying the government college with some items, and I worked as a supplier to the nearby medical institute. And I was wondering why, if there had been an incident in the area, why they hadn't blocked off the road a few hundred meters away. But then they decided to start behaving very badly indeed. They beat me, and I asked them, why are you beating me? Then they opened my shirt and unbuttoned my trousers and stripped me naked, and they did things I will never forget. Things that I have no word for it. So you were forced to go into, in, 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 be in the nude, in front of how many people? Uh, and, and a lot of people? It was in front of a lot of security personnel, believe me. It was the worst ever thing. I really cannot express just how bad it was. They did some incredibly inhumane things to me. How long did this go on for? They held me for, in the end, about a week. And then at the end of it you were just released, were you? Well, yes, they took me to the same place where they had picked me up. They left me there. Some people took me to hospital for a checkup. That's where I was diagnosed with head injuries. And that was uh, Kazi Munir there. Well, SM Sahai is Inspector General of the Police in Kashmir. What does he make of the allegations contained in the WikiLeaks cable? Well, I do not know how uh, the Red Cross could have accessed that information because uh, they normally would not have uh, uh, access to uh, the, these kind of locations. So uh, it's a completely unfounded and, uh, and, uh, and I'm afraid uh, something that has come out of uh, some propaganda that is taking place. What sort of locations would they not have access to? Well, they accuse us of, uh, where they accuse us of, uh, of carrying out the uh, torture. So such locations do exist? I mean, that, that implies well, uh, such a location. Well, they, they claim we hold people in custody because they're only in detention centers where uh, people are jailed and so there the whole torture takes place. So I do not know how they made this claim. I mean, what you're saying seems rather odd. You seem to be saying that they just don't have access to the places where torture takes place. I said they don't have access to places where people are, are uh, where, uh, people who are in, in, uh, under questioning are kept. But they do. I mean, the Red Cross always has access to prisoners. They've met 1,500 detainees. Yes, they went to the detainees, so there's no teacher torture happening there. So where does it happen? Torture doesn't happen, so I should have where, where can it happen? I mean, I think that's a, a very, very interesting question. Okay, well, or, I mean, what they're saying is they've spoken to 1,500 detainees, and many of them have given very consistent accounts of the torture they receive. I mean, I have to say, the State Department has been saying this for years as well. Rollers, legs stretched out, electricity suspended from ceilings. Well, if it is consistent and it has uh, the same kind of thing, it could, it could also be the product of uh, uh, consistent propaganda because a lot of false allegations are made and this is a routine kind of thing that is made up in any kind of conflict situation where the, the, the state apparatus is accused of uh, carrying out torture, which is a uh, standard allegation made against most security forces. The same kind of allegations have been made against the United States also. Yeah, but there's a difference, isn't there? Because when the United States was accused of it, the authorities there tried to investigate it, tried to find out what had happened, owned up to what had happened and condemned it, and even in some limited cases, admittedly, but in some cases, uh, charge well, people. We have, we have also investigated cases wherever there has been high end business, and people have been punished for it. Some individuals in the state of the can go overboard, but that does not mean that the state is in any way going to Can I just ask you whether you consider the International Committee of the Red Cross? I mean, many people would say it is the most authoritative global body on these issues, that it never seeks publicity. In this case, it wasn't seeking publicity. These were private communications, and that it does carry a great deal of weight. Uh, 
that is for you to to, to make an assessment whether you want to give that uh, that kind of uh, the credibility. But as far as we are concerned, we have not uh, shied away from giving them access to the uh, detainees. And more on that than that, uh, the fact is that uh, they are supposed to hear uh, have to look at the living conditions of the detainees, and that's what they should confine themselves. Okay, so as long as you've been Inspector General of Police, just to get this clear, no prisoner has ever been mistreated, correct? Exactly. Blanket smile from SM Sohai, Inspector General of the Police in Kashmir. Well, Murtaza Shibli is a London-based Kashmiri journalist who also worked for the ICRC in India. I asked him for his view on this leak. I think what Police Chief Mr. Sahai said is totally... Uh, propaganda because it's not he's not recognizing the fact or he's choosing to totally ignore the fact but police is a very small part of the story the story is there is more than 300,000 Indian army and security forces who have also their own torture centers where people have been killed uh, people have vanished from custody of their custody yeah, so you're saying in, to some extent we may have been talking to the, the wrong person and it's normally the army that does this, not the police, or is it the police as well? No, the police has a dedicated group of killers as well called Special Operations Group, which works in tandem with army and other security forces. So problem is rampant and everywhere. I worked with the International Red Cross in Kashmir and in New Delhi for five years and I know International Red Cross collected data identifying more than 300 secret torture centers which of course IG Sahai uh, had a slip of tongue saying they won't have access to and that's a fact uh, ICRC has been uh, asking the government to give access to these torture centers and they're rampant everywhere. Is there anyone in the Indian establishment, because there is a human rights commission isn't there, an official sort of human rights commission, does, does anyone raise this issue? I mean, Human Rights Commission of India is seriously compromised, as is the State Human Rights Commission. They they try to sometimes, but they don't, they lack any legal authority, as well as they are under extreme pressure of the army and Indian intelligence agencies. India boasts about being the world's greatest democracy. Are Indian people, who are very proud of that tag, are they dismayed when they hear these reports, or do they just think they're absolute nonsense, it's foreign propaganda, or what do they think? You have to see that Indian media normally discounts most of these accounts as well as Indian politicians. But there are groups of Indian people, civil society, who write about this and recent upsurge in violence in Kashmir where army killed about army and Indian paramilitaries killed about 120 innocent civilians. There has been some movement. Even one of the Indian parliament members recently who visited Kashmir said we have been tricked by our establishment but by saying that there is nothing happening in Kashmir. And there we are, that was uh, Moses uh, Shibley, who is now based in London, but uh, used to work for the ICRC in India.